Hey, what's up? Simon Kelly here. Now, in this video, I want to share with you some things about mindset. Uh, this is a part of a talk uh, that I gave for WP Virtual Summit called The Ten Commandments for Freelancers and Agencies. Uh, this last part of the talk was just all about mindset uh, and some of the key ways that you can reframe some of those negative thoughts that you might have. Um, one of the things that I think is the absolute key to overcoming self-doubt and I'll also walk you through uh, what I call the best friend exercise. So I'm looking forward uh, to sharing this with you. So let's jump straight in. Mindset. Uh, this is something that's very, very dear to my heart. Um, why do some people succeed and others struggle? Now I put I put succeed in the uh, in the inverted commas there, uh, in the quotation marks there, uh, because success I don't really like that word. Like it means different things to different people. It's not jets, it's not planes. Maybe it's just time with your family. And I don't even like how I used the word just just then. Uh, it's whatever you want it to be. Success is exactly what you want it to be. Comparing it with other people is just a waste of time. Uh, it just seems to be something that we naturally do that's quite instinctual um, as to do with a status thing that we may have needed when we were Neanderthals and, and animals, uh, but we don't exactly need that now, but it's still built into our brains. Uh, so what does success really look like for you? And, and why is it that, that some people with this, and I'm talking about people with the same level of opportunity, education, um, with all their faculties, with everything, people essentially with the same environment and everything like that. Why in that in those cases do some people succeed and some people tend to struggle? Not people who are struggling due to, to other circumstances, um, perhaps. So why is that? Right? Now, just give me a Y or an N in the, uh, in the chat box here. Does anyone here have negative thoughts? So why for yes? You ever get negative thoughts in your mind? As you're trying to work, you're trying to build your business, you're trying to speak in an event, trying to record something like this, um, you are trying to do anything. You're trying to deliver something for your client, you need to pick up the phone and make a sales call. Any negative thoughts come up? What about some of these? I'm not anything, everything, enough. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have what they have. They're amazing. I'm not. I don't have a natural speaking voice. I'm not, I don't have a good eye for design. I'm not a good developer, right? You say those things to yourself. I can't do that. No way. That's way too big. That's huge. I'm so overwhelmed. There's, there's too many things. Like it's just, it's too far away. I could never achieve those things. I could never do what they do. I'll look silly. I don't want to ask for help. I don't look stupid in front of the group, in front of my peers. I should know this. I should be better, right? These things happen. These things happen to me all the time. These thoughts. I had just a quick little story here. Um, I had I had many, uh, I guess I would say like many, many years where I really, really felt like I suffered through my own life for some reason. For it, I kind of feel, I feel sad for myself looking back um, and just thinking how, um, I guess like pointless it was, but you know, everything maybe happens for a reason and creates who you are. But uh, I just, I felt like I could not get out of my own head. I felt like I could not move forward. I compared myself to everyone and uh, it took me a really, really long time to develop the, the mindset and change my thought patterns in a way to help me uh, be more comfortable with myself and more comfortable with um, speaking and just getting out there and asking for help. Like that still is a huge one for me. Uh, but just thinking that I look ridiculous and I'm stupid and I am not valuable in this world. And there's very, very difficult times for me. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of mindset shifts that I've noticed in myself that I want to share with you and also that I've seen with other people um, that have been really helpful. So I'm not just going to look at this sad pug any longer, but it is, it is kind of funny as well. So we need to reframe it. We need to reframe these thoughts and we can, okay? These thoughts are not given to just us all right these these are this is the human condition that we that we i guess suffer from um is uh, having these negative thoughts is having these things that are that are kind of meant to protect us but they end up a lot of the times making us feel like crap which is um which is no good we're comparing ourselves to others all the time um and it, it doesn't inspire us it doesn't make us feel like we have confidence 
Uh, but we can choose these things. We can listen to those negative thoughts. We have 50 to 70,000 thoughts every day about all sorts of things all the time. You know, like you can't not think of a pink dinosaur as I say that. You'll be thinking about one. You'll be picturing one in your head. Um, these thoughts come up and you can't control them all the time, right? There are thoughts that you can control and create and there are others that are just like firing at all times, right? So why are you going after and believing in the ones that are so negative and they're not compassionate and they're not useful for you, okay? So you want to reframe these and you can, you can um, do this. You can have, you have the power in your mind. We all do to, to reframe these things and choose the thoughts that we listen to and, and actually speak to ourselves and speak positive things and useful things more than we listen all right one of the things is how helpful is this right now right let's say you go to the gym you haven't been to the gym in years and you're quite you're feeling quite unfit you're like oh but you're inspired and you're like yes i'm going to the gym let's do this you go to the gym walk in the door you're really really nervous like even just getting to that door was painful and very nerve-wracking you're in your head so much get on the treadmill and you're like, oh my God, like body just feels awful. Like, ah, oh, it just feels so weak. And then you're, you're running and you're like, oh, I just already started sweating. You feel embarrassed. It's like dripping all over you. You're just like, oh, you're not as fit as you used to be. Like, you know, you shouldn't have eaten all of that for all those years. You, I knew you should have gotten up off the couch. I should have been harder on you. You're useless. Like you're never going to get fit again. Like how, how helpful, like what, what are you doing? <laughs> like, are you trying to help me right now? Like, I got you here and this is the, the thanks I get. Like help, how helpful is that thought right now, right? Like as I was actually preparing for this talk, I was, um, and preparing to record this, I was thinking all sorts of things about like, I'm um, comparing myself to other people and like this talk's gonna, it's not gonna be that good. Like I need it to be amazing and I want everyone to get heaps of value from this. And like, oh, but I'm not gonna be able to because I stutter with my words and I don't deliver perfectly and I can't remember things. It's like, like, how is that, how is that helpful right now? You can't remember things. Just was you're about to, to deliver a talk, you can't remember things. Yeah, great. That's really, really filling me with confidence and just kind of, it, I feel it and hear it and go and just go, like, how helpful is that? And just have a bit of a laugh and just go, okay, let's keep moving, right? So it's just a little, little switch to remember. Like, how helpful is that right now? And just let it pass. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Uh, and this um, brings us to radical acceptance. So what if that is true, right? So like radically accept that. So you're on the treadmill and you're feeling unfit and you're not as fit as you used to be and you're sweating heaps more and you did eat a lot more in the past couple of years than you ever had, ever had in your life and you stopped playing sport and maybe you had kids and you were more tired and you got a different job and these things made it harder for you to exercise and you just were lazy at the same time and you felt lazy. Cool. So that's, that's where you are now. Can't change that. So radically accept that that is reality. That, well, that is where you are. Not that that's reality. That is where you are right now. Just accept that. So what now? So now what? You failed your exam. Okay, so now what? Right? My, um, my brother called me a couple of weeks ago and he was in hysterics. He was really, really upset uh, because he, was, he thought that he had failed um, his exam. And it, but he didn't know and he was too scared to check his email and he didn't want to call up the, um, the, the university because he kind of didn't want to know the answer as well. But he was totally hysterical because he didn't know the answer. And we talked through this process, basically. I was like, okay, well, so what if you did fail? So what if that happened? Let's, let's just accept that that's happened and just walk down that path together, right? So you failed. So what now? And he was quite upset initially and then like calmed down. And then we had a good chat and he was quite relaxed. And then a couple of, um, it's about a week later, I think, he gave me a call and he said, hey, like I actually did fail, but I thought about it and you know, it's not, it's not really that bad. Like it's okay. I'm just going to like repeat this particular subject and that's going to give me credit points. He started solving it and, and he came pretty good after it. And he, he mentioned that he, he was thinking like, so what? So what if that is true? And so what if that happens? That's okay. I'll still survive. I'm lucky to be here. That's awesome. And then we'll talk about confidence. So like, what is, what is confidence to you? What is, what does it mean? And I've been thinking about this for, for a really, really long time. I don't actually think that confidence is something that you get and that like really builds you up. It's the absence of 
all the other stuff. It's the absence of the, the, um, the thoughts that everyone else is looking at you and that you can't do what you say you're going to do. That is the lack of confidence, basically. That builds lack of confidence. Confidence is when those things just, just really aren't there. Confidence is a much more peaceful place than I think people tend to, to think it is. You don't like, you know, boom with confidence and f- like feel amazing. It just, that might show on the outside. But I've found anyway in with myself that our confidence is quite calm, quite a calm place. You just don't have all the other things. A friend of mine said this to me the other day and it really resonated. Confidence is keeping the promises that we make to ourselves. So if you keep saying you're going to, you know, ask for help, Uh, in a particular group and then you keep not doing that you're going to kind of beat yourself up over and over again like I should have done that I'm so weak blah 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 blah. Uh, but then when you go and take action into that that actually builds confidence because you are trusting yourself imagine if you had a partner who kept saying oh I'm going to take you to Paris this year like it's going to be awesome and you're like hell yeah that sounds amazing let's go to Paris yep sweet awesome you know months and months year pass two pass two years pass haven't been to Paris, they keep promising all the time. You're like, hey, hey, just stop. Can you just not promise that we're going to go to Paris? Like, because it's killing me. Like, I don't know why you keep saying it. Can you just either take me there or just stop saying it? Because I just don't believe the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yet we do this stuff to ourselves. We say we're going to go to the gym. We say we're going to eat healthy. Um, I said to myself for many, many years, I would re-sign up to uh, martial arts again. And I signed up for Kung Fu when I when I moved house last year. And um and I felt amazing. That really helped to, to build my confidence just by signing up. Going there was awesome as well. It's great. But really just doing the thing that I said I was going to do. It's just so much resistance to that. And then by doing it, I felt awesome. What, and just something to kind of close on here. What you believe is true. Right? Henry Ford once said, um, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And it took a while for that to kick in for me. I'd read that so many times and I'd seen the quote many times. I just kind of let it pass by. But whatever you believe is actually true. Like your beliefs create your reality. If you believe you're not good enough, you're going to look for signs and things and set life up in a way that kind of makes you not good enough so that your belief can be uphold. It's a really, I don't want to really want to call it a phenomenon, but it is a weird phenomenon that you will create those things. You will perpetuate that belief through your actions. So if you keep believing you're not fit, if you keep believing you can't do it, then it's going to happen, right? Unfortunately. So what's a more useful belief that you can have, right? Believe you can do it. When I, when I sit down to, to work on something now, I, I sit and I go, all right, this is hard, but I believe that I can do this. I really believe it. And I have to really shift my mindset into that, like believing that I can make this happen, believing I can get um, yesterday, the past two days, I've been working on producing a course. It has been quite difficult for me working with other people on doing that. I prefer to work by myself in my little hole on things that I'm uncomfortable with. But I had to believe and just kind of let go of the belief that I couldn't do it or that I wasn't good enough or it was going to be awful. I just had to let go of that stuff. So I had to believe that I was good enough. So what do you believe? Right? Think about your mindset as you go to work, as you... Um, go to the gym as you run or you know as you decide what um, what food to buy and eat do you believe that this is good for you do you believe that the food that you put in your mouth is going to is going to help you on an ongoing basis do you believe that you should have 8 hours of sleep do you believe that you can do the project that you're working on do you believe that you deserve um, the a business that you love Right. And one way to overcome self-doubt is something that I see a lot of people have. Um, imposter syndrome, self-doubt, uh, they just don't feel like they're worthy enough. Enough, And it's compassion. Compassion for others. Right? Self-doubt is a lot of comparing yourself with other people. Other people can, but I can't. I'm no good at this and they're amazing. And you doubt yourself. But if, you're comp- if you flip that around, by you not helping someone that you could potentially help, right? you actually doing a massive disservice to them and to the world, right? So be compassionate to the people that you could actually be of service to. And that will switch you from it's about me to it's about them and they deserve my help. So I'm going to go and help them. I have a quick exercise for you to do. It's called the best friend exercise. So I want you to in one, this is two columns on a piece of paper, like really quick exercise. I want you to just list in one column the things that you think about yourself. 
it doesn't have to be negative, but just can be um, th- when things come up and they, they're kind of they're blockages in your life, things that might be a little difficult for you to deal with. Like uh, I'm no good at whatever it might be. I'm no good at design. Um, I don't, I feel like um, I'm not going to be able to do sales calls. Um, everyone judges me. I'm not as smart as everyone else. List all of those things down. And then in the other comment, in the other column, write down what would your best friend say to you if they were to hear you say those things? What would they say? What would you say to them? If they were to say, I can't do this. I'm no good. I'm never, I don't deserve this. What would they say to you? And write those things down. Okay. Because the most important words that you say are the ones that you say to yourself. Awesome. All right. I've got some next steps for you. One thing that I want you to do is reach out and connect to someone, someone who may have been uh, useful in your life, someone who's been a good friend, uh, someone that you may just want to reach out to and see how they're doing. Just reach out to someone and just connect because we're all in this together. We have this shared human condition. You feel like you've got imposter syndrome. You don't feel worthy. So many people around the world feel like that. Through sharing this experience together and connecting with each other, it really lightens the load. So reach out to someone, ask how they're doing, or reach out and just and just connect and see if they want to become an accountability partner or just someone you can meet up with and, and just collaborate with on an ongoing basis. So I'd love you to just reach out to one person and just even if it's just to thank them. Learn, do, share, and we can all grow together. I hope this has been useful for you, a couple of uh, resources. Um, I really love this talk by Chris Doe um, on Mastering the Mind. It's on YouTube called Unlocking Your True Potential. Uh, There's a book that I read as well recently called The Courage to Be Disliked. I listened to it on Audible while I was running and it was awesome. Um, It is quite, quite, uh, I guess, like spiritual. Uh, Yeah, a little bit, yeah, lots of mindset related things and just very meditative state I found. And there is a, there's a new, I guess, company organization called WP and Up uh, for mental health in the, in the WordPress space, which I think is just an absolutely amazing organization. And um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic that they're, they're putting this together. So get behind them. Um, they have live chat. So if you want to connect with them, if you're struggling um, at the moment or you know someone that is, then they're great to talk to. And even just to connect and just say thanks for being here, you know, uh, reach out to them. Uh, And also, of course, resource is the rest of the summit. I hope you have enjoyed this talk. I hope this has been useful for you. Thank you so much for sticking around uh, for this talk, Uh, even though it's been like three in one. um, I can't wait to connect with everyone else who's been part of this summit as well. Again, a massive thanks uh, to Anchin and the organizers and for putting this together and all of you for um, sticking with me throughout this talk. Here's how you can connect with WP Elevation, uh, Instagram, Uh, and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. And then here's my Instagram and my LinkedIn if you're into that. Uh, I managed to get control of the WP Elevation Instagram yesterday. So I'm going to be posting a little bit more stuff about like what we're doing in the office on the days that I'm hanging out in there. And uh, yeah, you can catch up and see what's going on. Thanks again so much. I'll stick around a bit for questions and I can't wait to see the rest of the talks at the summit. Uh, Until next time, I'm Simon Kelly. Go Elevate! Thank <laughs> you.